Baba, Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. Who does the Lord want you to meet tomorrow? Where does he want you to be tomorrow? Life can be lived to that kind of precision. Because one of God's structures for delivery or for survival in tough times is opportunity. Should I bought this vehicle or bought this vehicle? I have money for a bus, but I have the nudge to go and enter a car. Because in the car is where the person I need to meet will be. I have this, I have enough to, to take a bike because I feel a little tired, but there is a nothing to trek because on the road I will meet the person I've been trusting God to meet. Opportunity. I close. There was a tribe in Israel that merchandised the perfect understanding of the opportunities that were locked up in days and in seasons. A tribe that we have made mention of serially in this house, the Bible calls them the children of Issachar, whose merchandise was the understanding of times. The word times there is opportunities. That was the edge of the children of Issachar. First Chronicles 12, 32. So that we can pray. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Of the times, they could, if you sat with one of them, they could pick out all the opportunities in a day. And that was the age that they had. There was something the Lord said to me here when I sat down the other time. He said, Son, the anointings that come just because a man asked. Be intentional. We may not have all the time to pray this evening. But on Tuesday, to be part of the labors for the meeting, and then we'll have the sermon for the day. And in your home, pray. The anointings that you need because the times are changing. If you check your store and you find out that the equipments you have cannot meet up with the demands of the day, and you know that what you need is in God, please ask. Let it be God that we say, I'm not giving you. There are two graces I've started asking for. And I stumbled on the second one in the middle of the night. It's called the Zebulon anointing. And I'll teach you about it. You can do your study. I'll share with my wife this morning that was maybe about 2 a.m. I'll share with my wife this morning that I found out that when Israel is about taking territories or coming into new places in destiny, there's an arrangement of tribes that advances their journey. The tribe that goes in the front is the tribe of Judah. And that's significant because in the beginning, God. And so I'm beginning to realign how I enter into days, into seasons. There must be quality time in extolling the virtues of the God of heaven. My God. You are this. You are that. I know you know that you are those things. But my heart resonates with your essence. And so I acknowledge you. I found out that the second tribe in the arrangement was the tribe of Isaac. Because when you praise him, he unlocks opportunity. That's his response. He unlocks opportunities. But you need men who have the capacity to discern opportunity. Israel has mighty men. They are coming behind. But the mighty men don't know when to strike. Some of you have had money. And you have seen an opportunity. I will tell you something in that your line of business because Jesus told me something this afternoon, but it's only you I will tell. It will not be now. I mean, the result will not be now. But if you listen to this thing I want to tell you, don't tell another person. You will see what the next five years will become. This afternoon, while I was praying, 
That's what he told me. So I'll tell only Isaac so that we'll use you to back test this thing. So, opportunity. When do we strike? When do we take over them? What side do we come into? When I returned, I will show. I did a study middle of the night about the children of Issachar, and I found about about eight things that characterized their understanding, their discerning ability. And honestly, I was wowed. And the Lord said, "If you ask me." It was a gift that that family possessed. I can still give it. So I've been asking. But I found out that after them was not Dan, was not God, was not Asher, it was Zebulon. They were the only three tribes that led. And so I began to do a study of Zebulon. Stay with me now, Isaac. What I found out was that the name Zebulon meant the dwellings of honor. And the Jewish scripts I studied showed that it was at the battle of Zebulon that Jacob broke out. It's anointing for kingdom finance. And that's why I'm speaking to you. Because you already have a vessel to receive it. But you must consciously ask him. And, and if you are like him in the spirit. It's not all of us that we preach. It's not all of us that we teach. Men must rise in this house who operate by that anointing. But the reason why many likely in the body of Christ. After the order of Zebulon. Have tried to do business. And have run into debts. Is because they moved without Judah. And Issachar. Their strength was in the wisdom that they had possessed. And not first in the acknowledgement of God. So you will need to build a praise pattern. And I'm saying this to you Isaac. You cannot suffer. Mark my words. As long as you. Everyone that genuinely serves in this house. And not just serves their house, but serves this young man. My dying is your living. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't come to the open prophesying, prophesying, but acts of service have a way of unlocking a strange dimension in me to release a blessing. And many of you, your future has been fully written. Without your knowing, you will only need to walk circumspectly because your path has been decorated with opportunity. I'm saying that what some people walked into after five, six years, it will happen for some of you in youth service as early as that. There was a young lady in Lagos, maybe she's listening tonight. Glory, that's her. we met online. Hello, sir. And she started speaking to me. And then one day I went for a meeting in Lagos. And she used to live far. So she came for the meeting. It wasn't like she gave me anything. But came for the meeting. Why did you come? She I just felt that since I've been talking to you online. And you are coming. It will be honorable to say you came. Let me come to see you. So it was honor that brought you. What's the issue around you? That they want to marry. So we kept tracking. And then during the lockdown, as they were shutting down cities, I said, relocate now to Akure. But I have a job in Lagos. Silence. Just go down to Akure. She got to Akure in three months. She had met him. In five months, she had married. Daddy, the jobs here are not wait. The jobs here are not wait. My husband's job is not wait. Lagos will come to Akure to employ you. And then after a month, she had two jobs. She was doing Lagos jobs, doing them in Akure. And then one evening I called, said, Leave Akure and go back to Lagos. But my husband has a state job. Tell him to abandon that job and go to Lagos. So they thought they were going to get to Lagos and the husband was going to be scavenging. One of the husband's friends used to work in a company. 
And because they were in Lagos, she just called them. I, I'm leaving my job, but they say I should look for somebody who can do the job. Should I drop your name? But you are in a correct. I'm in Lagos now. And they got the job. That's how I got the job. I acknowledge that we are not strong for everybody. But when you find those who are strong for you, those that God has assigned to your life, stay there. Every man with Zebulon anointing needs somebody with Isaac anointing. How many of you remember my friend in Abuja? You remember? Not my business, my friend. That's how we're supposed to jump. What does he call me? Does anybody remember what he calls me? No, 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 no. Not my business friend. There's a name he calls me. He calls me the unveiler of seasons. Because to him, I was his Isaka. Somebody's bringing one billion tomorrow morning. Don't collect the money. It's stolen money. If you collect it, your company will sink. He calls me in the evening. They brought one billion naira. Dollar conversion in a bag. What did you say to them? I said, no, sir. Say, good. Because you did that, this is what will come. Somebody's bringing 500 million naira cash in a bag. Don't collect it, though. It's coming next week. It's government stolen money. Your company will go down. Sir, they brought it, though. Okay, tomorrow it's a little over 100 million. I can't track exactly. It's 105 million. They brought it in the morning. Don't take it. It's not your money. It's government money. That's how we tracked. Until I walked into the place again and I was going to prophesy again. And I said something happened here. You've not followed the rules. You have handled a business terminating opportunity. There was a big one coming. But you were not faithful. You went for the little one. So in three months... You become a man of the street. And if you ever survive, this is what will become of you. In four days, 19 billion debt. <laughs> Broke my heart. My friend had told me, this ark will build it. Every week, we'll be sending this. We'll be sending this. It will have been a forgotten thing. Because we met casually. The Lord just told him, meet that guy. I, I can't remember what I wore. And I don't have big clothes. He came and knelt before him, touched his shoulder, and told him, shut down what you are doing. This is what, this is the business I'm supposed to be doing. If you are faithful, five years, eight companies, five Nigerian cities, three nations, everything happened in eight months. I told him, no, no. The Lord said five years. I will understand your seasons. Did you obey to the letter? He looked down. I gone now. No business for you. A young man met me in Oka. I told my wife last week. Ran to my room. Said business is crashing. He said, but the only reason why I've stayed true, I had a lot of opportunity was at the last time you came. You looked at me suddenly and warned me that I should not compromise. I'm not compromised, but I'm suffering. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. We are not rich. But our choice to stay with Jesus in poverty we make a lot of rich people my fear is if you will continue with him when you become rich you are in a good place and you don't need to give to me before your life is advanced you don't need to it's my responsibility as a father to advance your lives and it's on the strength of that anointing that I decree and everyone who has a place in business from tonight begins to flourish I told my wife this afternoon, I said, I'm going to back test this thing with our business. And I'll do it. Don't pour, but making many people rich. That's, it's, 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 an oil, it's, it's the strain of the oil that rests upon this ministry. And I decree in the name of Jesus, everyone doing business. Tonight, the season shifts positively for you. No matter what it is, we put favor on that business in the name of Jesus. I know it's a casting down time in our nation. But we flip, we flip your possibilities. We flip your possibilities. We flip your possibilities. And I decree tonight in the name of Jesus, prosper. 
I know it's been going against you, but it changes tonight. In the name of Jesus. And I decree by the anointing, largeness comes upon you.